All right, so now we're gonna sort of hit the accelerator a little bit because I want you to start working on this a little more independently. Um, this guy here, right? y equals four minus the absolute value of x. At this point here, um, it starts to get a little bit confusing when you think about um, all of the visuals. And in fact, the algebra is probably gonna help you out a fair bit here, right? So what I'm gonna do straight away is instead of drawing any stuff on here, I'm gonna appeal to my algebraic definition that I wrote up above. So go ahead, draw yourself a set of axes whilst I'm doing this, but let's think about what this actually means y equals four minus the absolute value of x, like we said before, is shorthand for two different things. Number one, if x is positive, if that thing inside the absolute value signs is a positive number or zero, then you just take the uh, value itself. So it's just gonna be four minus x, provided x is greater than or equal to zero. If on the other hand, x is negative, then I'm gonna get uh, the other part of this, right? So it would be four take away negative x four take away negative x is four plus x. So I'm gonna use these two as my branches because I know what these look like. Um, four minus x is gonna have a y-intercept at four and it's gonna have a gradient of negative one. So I'll go ahead and I'll draw that guy in. There's four and it's gonna have a gradient of negative one. So that means I can read off that x-intercept also as four. And then when I have a look at the other branch, let me put it in, um, let, me, let me switch some colors over here. I'll make this guy here, what's well, gonna complement? I'm gonna go with um, orange, okay? Um, when I have a look at four plus x, I would normally write that as x plus four. It's got a gradient of one, but it has that same y-intercept, so it's gonna collide at y equals four, up the top there, like so. So you can see here, I've got a, x-intercept over here on the left-hand side of negative four. And because I started with my algebraic definition, there's not much work here. I can just label these branches as they were. x plus four over here on the left-hand side, and then uh, four minus x on the right-hand side, okay? So if you wanted to think about this visually, there's kind of two changes that happen from our original absolute value graph. For starters, um, I turned it upside down. You know, instead of having this upward facing V, I've got something sort of facing downward, right? And that's because of this minus sign, which lives out the front of the absolute value of X. So it reflects my graph downward. And then I say, well, this four over here, um, that's gonna be a translation just like we've been seeing before. It's actually a translation uh, vertically and it's what's moved me upwards. So my uh, intercept is no longer at the origin, right? So that's why you can see I'm up there at four, okay? Now I'm going to hand you these last two examples together and teachers I would love you to um, have a wander around and really check and see what's going on here. This idea of absolute value, um, we don't just apply it to straight lines, we can apply it to any kind of function, particularly when there's a negative of some kind. So for example, this is a parabola that, you're, that you know how to graph. What happens when we take the absolute value of that thing? What will it look like? What effect will it have? This guy over here on the right the final example we're gonna to do together, it's uh, a cubic, you've got x cubed there, so you're gonna to have to do some factorizing, you're gonna to have to um, you know, work out what you end up with with that quadratic. So this time I'm gonna give you, what's the time here? So it's 11.23 on my clock. All right. So what I've done here for um, these two graphs is, as in the past, I've found it very helpful to have the basic or the guide graph in my head and then use the absolute value to make an adjustment, right? So what I've got here on the left-hand side, y equals x squared minus one. Um, for starters, I can think about this as a parabola that has been translated downward, a single unit. Um, or I can also think about it as having those two roots at negative one and one. And I kind of need to work out what those are anyway, so that's why I've gone ahead and factorized. Have a look for the parts of the graph that are already positive and then just leave them there, right? So in this case, it's over here on the left-hand side. That guy can stay exactly where it is. And then you've also got this guy over here on the right. Now all I need to do to complete this graph is to take that troublesome negative section right there in the middle between x is negative one and x equals one and then reflect it up so I have the positive section. So looking to me at my scale, I'm guessing it'll be something like this. Oop. There we go, uh, I've done better. Let me try and make it a little more symmetrical. I think I'm making it worse, all right. That'll just have to do, okay? Now, obviously I have another y-intercept there, which I need to know. Remember that my guide graph, it would have had a y-intercept down here of negative one because I moved one unit downwards. I translated, I should say, right? So therefore, because I've reflected up, that y-intercept of negative one just becomes a y-intercept of positive one and we're good to go. 
okay? I will complete things off by uh, labeling everything. So these parts here are the concave up sections, x squared minus one. And then this guy in the middle here, it's the part that's reflected. It's the negative version, right? So this is y equals one minus x squared, which is of course that part of the parabola that has been number one flipped upside down and number two translated upwards, okay? And last one over here, the cubic, let's finish it out. I will take the same logic that I used before. I do have these uh, x-intercepts here, which I got by factorization, negative two, zero, and three. Here's a positive section of the graph that I'm just going to do the line over. There we go. There's another one over there on the right hand side for x is greater than three. And then all the rest of the bits are going to be reflected up above. So that's why you have this sort of sharp boundary up here. Um, and then the same deal for this guy, which looks kind of like a part of a moon there. So you have this bouncy, weird looking thing, and that's the graph we're interested in. So um, like before, I can see there's the parts which didn't change. So there's this one here, which is x cubed minus x squared minus six x, which applies to that little part and also the part here. And then you've got the parts that I had to reflect, these guys, and I'm going to label them with the appropriate equation, which in this case, uh, let's just swap everything around, plus x squared plus 6x. There we go. So this is most of what you're going to need to handle for absolute value graphs. In fact, we've gone a little bit further in some ways than some parts of um, the textbook will go through. Um, yesterday I showed you this and I crossed off part of it. Um, those first three exercises in the year 11 tuna book, 3b, 3c, 3f, they're to do with just linear functions and um, polynomials. 4e, just that single question, question 8, is what will help you have some practice at actually doing these graphs and constructing them, okay? Um, I encourage you, like we did yesterday, to have a play with Desmos, but for any issues that you have um, issue with, please go ahead and um, let us know if you wanna put a question in the chat or just ask your teacher. Now, um, I've got a question from Abby in the chat about something going to the right. Uh, which graph are you looking at, Abby? Which one is it there? Is it the parabola or is it the cubic? Which one are you having trouble with? The middle one, okay. Ah, good question. All right, so x squared minus one, isn't it, isn't it going to the right? Now this is where, if you're looking at this as well with us, um, that's fine. If you're gonna go ahead with your work, then um, teachers, if you wanna just go ahead and mute me, um, that's totally fine, I will not take offense. Um, but for anyone who is wondering, why is this graph here, why is it not a horizontal translation? I've just done some up-down stuff, okay? Well, you need to look very carefully at what the equation looks like here and think about what is being adjusted. Again, uh, where are those F1 pit stop guys, where are they actually attached to and changing things? Now, it's a lot harder to see when you've got these absolute values in the way. So let's just think about the guide graph for a second. I'll do this in, um, I'll do this in gray because that's how I did my guide graph. If I think about just this without the absolute values, how can I make clear that there's actually a vertical translation and there's nothing happening horizontally? Well, have a look at that minus one that you can see there. What is it acting on? Is it acting on the X? And the answer is, even though it's on the right hand side, it's not really because the thing that's happening to X first is x squared. You can see that kind of separates it out, right? So I need to act directly on the x. If I wanted a move to the right, I would have to say x minus one and then square, okay? And I know that's a very, very subtle difference, um, but these are two completely different graphs. x minus one all squared is actually translated to the right. So when you have a look at this guy over here, what's really changing? That minus one, or the one I should say, belongs on the left-hand side it's really y plus one equals x squared. So when you write it like this, you can see that plus one is directly interacting with y. There's no squares, no square roots, no other stuff in the way. So that's why it's really a vertical change, not a horizontal one. So did that answer your question, Abby? I hope that's useful. It is a bit tricky, I know. It's a weird nuance, but hopefully it's a bit clearer. Fantastic, all right. So teachers, I'm going to uh, shut off my video. I will hang around here for anyone who is actually stuck at home and they can ask me questions. Um, but I'm assuming um, that you guys are fine, in which case, given there's only a few more minutes um, to go, I'd love it if you could indicate to me that you're fine by maybe switching off, uh, maybe logging off. I'll leave the meeting going because I'm recording for anyone who wants to ask questions online. But thanks you 12. I hope you guys are having a good day. Stay safe. Don't forget to keep your distance as much as possible. Have a good one. Thanks.